Yo. We got that. Package. Package. Smalls for all. Yes. What's that? It's a charity and they support young people and women in Africa with underwear. Secondhand underwear. Which uh, like bra oh, bras. Like bras. They do pants as well, but this is just bras. That I don't need that someone else in Africa can need. Supporting nice. the education of women and children in Af Africa. So that's the address. If you've got any undies, bras for Africa. Bras and smalls for all. As well. Oh, do they? Yeah. We'll maybe put that link down below. Yeah. Smalls for all. New thing. New thing. New. Give a load of stuff away. Yeah. Make space doing. for a new thing. Oh yes, it's still in my light. I've got a little light. Oh cool. Did you get one? Mm, there was not a little light when I got one. Oh my wow. Navy blue. Navy blue and black. That's nice. You have to take out the packaging so you can see it a bit better. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. Helmet. It's nice, isn't it? It is nice. Um, nice. Is that lighter than your other one? Does it feel lighter in your hand? Because my one felt a lot lighter yeah, than my other helmet. I think it does feel lighter. Wow. I'm lucky, aren't I? New helmet day. New helmet day. Yo, did you know Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald is now available on Sky? You didn't know that, did you? No. Good. We can watch it tonight. tonight. I thought you'd like that. Shakedown on the, the time trial bikes. Time trial bikes. What are you doing? Does it need a roof? Castle. You made a castle out of all the, bo out of the boxes? Mm -hmm. We've got to post them out to people in a minute. Oh, and a roof. There we go. You're going to keep the rain out? You've got to keep the rain out of your castle. School holidays. There you go. That. Well, you got to find some... Some positions like that. Sorry, sorry everyone, you can't have your packages today because we need them for a castle. Yeah, it's fort day! Fort day. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good girl. So, we've been asked in the comments how George and I met, which is great because the more questions you ask, the more things we can answer on these vlogs, which is useful. It's my favourite story to tell. George and I met doing a long distance bike packing endurance event <laughs> called London Edinburgh London. It's only once every four years. You have to enter a ballot to get in. So a group of us in a wider group that have known each other for a while, 10,000 kilometers CC, which is a brilliant cycling collective, a sort of online community, but had a bit of a hub in London. Six people from that group decided to sign up to LEL and do it as a bit of a team. One of those people was George, who I knew vaguely but not really. So on the second day, getting towards the end of the day, we're at a place called Moffat. A group of us had formed on the road and we were riding pretty quickly and I'd shoved my jacket into my saddle bag earlier that day and hadn't put it in quite right. And during this sort of quite fast riding, my jacket had been working itself loose from the saddlebag and managed to wedge itself in the back part of my bike in the drivetrain, which is the part that sort of does all the gear changing. 
the speed that we were travelling and the force at which it suddenly halted literally snapped apart from my bike, which is this bit, <laughs> which I've kept as a memorabilia. And I thought I was done for. I, I thought that was the end of my journey. And luckily we were essentially at a control point, which is where they have volunteers, it's where they have food, it's where they, in some of the controls, have mechanics. And luckily there was a mechanic at this one. He was able to convert my bike into a single speed, which means I had one gear to ride in. Um, I got some really nice encouragement from some of the volunteers, people telling me like, you'll be able to do it, don't worry about it. I was having messages from people offering to lend me bikes, so at that point I was really ready to just carry on and I thought I'll be able to do it and it's, it's all fine. This is the state of my jacket, which I continued to wear for the next three days after having been caught in the back of my bike. Um, so, at about two in the morning, I think it was, at Moffat, George came into the canteen of the control point and I sort of shuffled over and was like, I broke my bike. <laughs> I'm going to try and ride with you guys and see how far I get. So the next day, we went from Moffat to Edinburgh, which is about 80k, if I remember right, and it was the worst 80k of my entire life. It was so slow going because the gear that I'd been put in, I think the me mechanic had worried about me being able to get up the hill so he put it on quite an easy gear which meant that when I was on the flats I just wasn't getting anywhere I was just spinning out so I'm sort of working really hard not getting anywhere crying <laughs> just letting the rest of them go ahead because it was so frustrating finally got to Edinburgh and at this point I think that's the end for me this thing I've been waiting for and training for is over and it's because I got my jacket stuck in the back of my bike George had all the while been struggling with an Achilles problem and was thinking he might have to pull the plug as well. So we're sat around this table eating canteen food, I'm just sort of sobbing and feeling sorry for ourselves but neither of us really wants to quit. At this point we've sent the others ahead, we just go, we didn't want to hold them up as this this event, although it's, they don't describe it as a race, there are time cutoffs. So if you don't get to a certain control by a certain time, then you don't complete the, well, you can complete the event, but you don't get your brevet card stamped and you don't get a medal. So I'm receiving loads of nice messages of encouragement, but I'm still really upset. And George, I remember him saying, why are you crying over something you can't control? Like these things happen, don't worry about it. And Something about that just made me think, I don't know, I was just motivated to carry on and I felt like he didn't want to give up either so we were sort of egging each other on to carry on. He'd taken a look at my bike and seen that I was in a silly gear and was like we can change this, if you buy a new chain from the mechanic he can put it on a better gear and we can get, we can definitely try and get further. He'd been having messages from his physio with how he can sort of relieve the pain in his Achilles so he was keen to go and try and carry on this this mega ride. We still had 500 miles to go and some of the hillier sections still to come. So yeah we rolled out of Edinburgh control point together and it was really fortunate timing actually because a guy on a fixed gear bike who chosen to ride that kind of bike was rolling out just at the same time and he essentially was like you'll be fine don't worry about it I'm, I've chosen to do it like this so you'll be fine. So that was quite motivating and yeah George and I just spent the next three days um, chugging out like 300 kilometer days taking about 15 hours per day to do it splitting the days up by just chunking it into sort of 100 kilometer bike rides and eating as much as we could and stopping for coffee when we could it's to the point where I nearly punched George when he was like yeah there's a cafe around the corner there's a cafe around the corner and there was not a cafe around the corner and I've never forgiven him for this <laughs> um, we finally finished the event with about three hours to spare at 3 a.m. on the last on the last day, and it was really overwhelming. We were both oh, I was really lucky. I had like a whole welcoming squad there with snacks and 
champagne and stuff like this. So it was quite overwhelming. And I just remember the sinking feeling when I looked around and I felt like George had gone. I thought he'd just left. And I was like, <gasps> three days together and he's just gone. And it turned out he's just gone to his car. And I remember my friends actually looking at me funny, like, who's this guy? Um, <laughs> But yeah, so finished the event, managed to do it, got our brevet card stamped, wherever it is. Boop. And then the next day I slept for like hours, hours and hours and hours and hours. And I remember being in complete haze and days. And I woke up and I looked at my phone and I had a text from George and um, he phrased it as, did I want to go and have a race debrief at a gin place in London? And I was like, <laughs> do I? And so, so we went and we had some gin and we did have, like for the first hour, we did literally have a race debrief and I was like, oh well, this is a race debrief, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then we carried on dating and then I started working at Jam and then started living with George and now we're moving to the North and it's all because we went on a stupidly long bike ride and I broke my bike. So that is how George and I met.